Power Rangers, Guardians of Gaia. Season 1, Chapter 15, Indigo Nightmare, Part 3. Dragon and Grin, planting the Dragon Buster to the ground, taking a seat on a mountain overlooking West Central City, home to well over 3 million people. 3 million fools that refused the power and protection of the darkness. Here, he would start his assault. After all, he knew the Guardians of Gaia were unlikely to just hand over the Gaian crystals, meaning he needed a location to make an example of. The screams of three million people as their city burned down to the ground would be a sufficient message. No! Dragon cried as his armor dematerialized, his voice seeming softer as his eyes flickered blue. We can't just destroy a city full of millions! It's wrong! Dragon shook his head hard, his eyes returning to the amber state. He sighed, carving a small hole in the ground and filling it with water from his flask. Looking into it, he watched his reflection change to that someone without an indigo streak in their hair and blue eyes as opposed to a yellow. I thought I told you to keep it quiet, Draden. Dragon growled, we're supposed to be joining us one, not two minds fighting for control of a single body. It can have side effects. Why you're hurting people for no good reason, Drayden argued. I won't be a part of this any- You don't have a choice, Dragon Ward, began to war ripple. We had a deal, and I'm calling the shots. Now get back in line! Dragon panted hard as his reflection turned to normal. Why be seeing sweat from the brow? It seems the unicorn's light has managed to separate us a little after all. Strange, seeing how he wasn't able to come close last time. Still, it's of little consequence. Draden can't possibly retake this body. I'll use it to destroy this entire planet, leaving only darkness in its wake. Dirk blinked, cleaning out his ear with his pinky pinker. Um, I must not have heard that correctly, because it sounded like our worst enemy ever since we dropped down to this planet just offered to help us take down his own comrade. Dargoon is no ally of mine, Walker insisted, or of Dreidarius. Look, I don't know what you've managed to read up on him, but this isn't the first time that Dargoon made the motion to annihilate Kaya completely. And when he made it clear he was going to attempt it before, he was tossed aside from Dreidarius' ranks, and left without the means of going through his goal. So, in a moment of desperation, he turned to another method. Nikki's eyes widened. We possess the guardian of darkness. You're not honestly listening to him, are you? Madeline demanded. Come on, this is obviously a trick. Dragon blowing up the plane is just what you want. Yes, because we want to be destroyed along with all of you. Dark Ear replied sarcastically. Newsflash, Violet Ranger. My father doesn't want to destroy the world. He wants to rule it. Kind of hard to do that when there's no guy left to rule. Problem is... Darkoon warped the nature of our goal to the point that he thinks leaving an empty void where Gaia was is the same as ruling it. Walker added, in case you're wondering, if you gave him your crystals, not only could he do that, he would. How? You'll recall Dragoon's mentioned the existence of several more crystals. Walker explained, all lying lifeless where the dragon Bunster was once left, deep in one of the many dark zones of Gaia. They belong to the original Guardians of Gaia, who wound up draining said crystals of their energy to try and remove the curse from the Dragon Crystal. As you know, it failed, for the most part. However, if Dragoon were to fuel them with his own substantial darkness that he's gathered, then focus all their power along with your own crystals and straight down to the planet's core. Doomsday, Nikki finished getting a nod from Walker. So, how did I stop him? Patrick demanded. This is even possible. I mean, look at us. It's all us down. The Gaia Swords are gone. The Gaia Swords weren't destroyed. Leia added correctly, getting confused looks from everyone. Yeah, this is the finale. Look, I don't know exactly how it works, but if they take too much damage, their consciousness, or whatever it is, gets sent back to the crystals, and the Zords are sent back to their hiding places to enter some sort of automated self-repair mode. So, as long as our crystals still have power, the Gaia Swords will always be able to regenerate, no matter how badly they get hurt? 
Dirk asked. If you're going by the theory that they're living creatures, then yes, that's exactly right, Layla replied. Unfortunately, it'll take time for them to be battle ready after that last fight, and there's no guarantee they'll end any differently. Which is why I've come to you, Walker noted. I would just as soon destroy Dargoon and take the crystals in his possession with him, but I lack the means, and I know that you desire to save the boy he's possessed. I'm left with only one option, and that is to help you find the means with which to free him. How? Patrick asked. You said before, all those crystals couldn't get the job done, and the unicorn sword couldn't bring repel Dargoon's course either. True, Walker replied. However, if you use the full extent of your powers together, you will create a light far greater than the unicorn swords. Problem is, in your current state, that's impossible. Even your powered up mode is only able to grant you access to a far larger portion than normal. That only lasts for as long as your bodies can withstand it. Then how do we reach our full potential? Nikki inquired. The truth is, the original Guardians of Gaia weren't the first users of the Gaia crystals. Logger explained. Long before the dwarves of Mount Titanium constructed the Crystal Blast Morphers, they developed the five gauntlets that channel the power of the crystals. These gauntlets granted power far greater than the blasters, as well as armor melted or meant to help the user contain it all. Oh! Oh! So, is this another super mode or battleizer? Well,. You know, technically, battleizers are used for armor, but then again, so are super modes. I mean, have you seen the GET ON WITH IT? Sorry! However, there are certain ones that they granted too much power. So when the crisis they were created, the combat was ended, the gauntlets were disposed of. Where does that leave us? Madeline asked. The gauntlets weren't and couldn't be destroyed at the time, Walker went on. So, to get rid of them. They were dropped into a place no one could ever reach them. The Well of Regret, deep inside the Nexus of Ergy, under the ancient library. Well, I can just tell that's, that well is going to be full of joy and happiness and sunshine and rainbows. That must be the other reason why the wizards built the library over the Nexus, Layla realized. To protect the well and keep outsiders from reading the gauntlets. Hey, now someone's keeping up after all, Darkia commanded. Thing is, even the wizards, who had access to the Nexus and the Well, would probably fail to retrieve the gauntlets if they try. What is your thought? Professor Snyder I wanted her to allow. Because the Well Regret takes a person's inner fears, doubts, regrets, mistakes, and makes them up to face them. Walker responded. The truth is, I'm telling you all of this, knowing full well you're going to do with this information, the odds of retrieving the gauntlets are extremely slim. Especially in the time we have. However, if any of us are to survive, this may be our only chance. Rangers looked at each other, uncertain, to which Walker huffed and turned away. I'll leave it up to you to decide. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare an attack on Dragoon and his swords tomorrow, just in case you need extra time. Wait! Nikki exclaimed before Walker, Darkia, and Spantis could take their leave. We'll take you what you said into consideration. But just remember, this doesn't change anything. If Dragoon is defeated, We'll go right back to our battle. Walker Smith, e grinning evilly. Believe me, I wouldn't have it any other way. With those words, Walker opened up a portal before himself, Darkia and Spantis, the three taking their leave from the ancient library. Nikki sighed, looking back at the others as he contemplated everything they'd been told. After a few moments, Mal cleared her throat, clearly taking the floor. <clears throat> I really, really hate to admit this, Valen muttered. But unfortunately, Walker's right. But since I really hate the guy, you think that this is a suicide mission? I think the only chance we've got is stopping Dragoon and saving Dragon. The the destruction, microscopic dots, etc. Patrick thought aloud, yeah, that sounds like our mission. I'm still going to punch Walker's lights out when this is over. But I think taking his advice might be our only real option, Dark amended. If we can access our full potential, we have more than enough power to bring the Kaya Swords back to full strength, Layla added. Nikki grinned wildly. Well, that didn't take long. Good thing, too, because if we're doing this, we better go right away. Charles nodded. I'll stay here with Zawa. Hopefully, our communicators will work from down there. I'll be able to keep up with the date what's happening. 
Hey, um, this is probably a dumb time to ask this, but how exactly do we get to the bottom of the Nexus, Dark Ash? I mean, what, did the wizards build a giant ladder or something? A few minutes later, the five friends were at their lowest chamber in the ancient library, peering down to a tunnel that exited into a large, rainbow-colored abyss. And sure enough, there was a gigantic ladder leading straight down to it. That makes about as much sense as the source of all life on the planet being located beneath a crispy green. Yeah, I love that bit. I can tell they did that on purpose, to, just to add a little fun. Look, you're not allowed to be snarky anymore, Patrick said. Every time you joke about something, it comes true. Well, look at it this way. We get done exercise. Nikki stayed, climbing down the ladder through the tunnel. Or we'll suffer a heart attack and fall to the bottom. Leia choked, following after her the Larry Lear. And hey, at least we'll get there quicker, right? Madeline rolled her eyes as she and the boys followed suit. Leila, please don't talk about that. Also, if we ever get home, let's promise to skip this part of the story we tell our parents. You know how much Mom hates hides. And so, the rangers climbed down the ladder. They climbed and climbed and climbed for what had to at least have been an hour. I give my life over you. Also, and still there was no one in sight. The group was getting tired. Trying to continue to descend down the lair and not losing their footing was becoming an ever really increasing task. Ugh, how much longer is this freaking matter? Melanie groaned. I can't be too much further. Nikki replied, stopping for a moment to wipe the sweat from her forehead. You said that a half an hour ago, Patrick nodded. 32 minutes, 29 seconds be precise, Lyle corrected. You have a what? Patrick asked. No, I've been climbing it in my head. Lyle answered with a moan, because I had nothing else to do besides climbing this ladder. I'm starting to tire out too. Dark eyed. You know, maybe coming down here without a rest was a bad idea. After all, we've been searching across the towns, been in three different fights, gone power-up mode, got our butts royally kicked by Dragoon in one day. We were on fuse before we even got to this lair. Well, can't go back now, Nikki yelled. We got ah! Nikki yelled out as she felt the rung under her foot gave way, falling all the way down to the abyss. Okay, our belly the bugs got kind of shoddy from here on! Makes sense, Layla replied her voice. It's got so concerned. The materials used in the construction of this ladder have been exposed to the raw elements of the abyss for well over a millennium. In retrospect, duh! Madeline groaned. Now what? Well, maybe it's just that one wrong, Dirk stammered. Yeah, and maybe in the summer you look good in a mankini, Patrick snarked. Which, FYI, if I wasn't already blind, I'd want to gas my eyes out of the sight of. For the last time, I swear I never wore that thing! Dark sat back. One of Tanya's friends bought it as a joke. Oh! Dark yelled as the rung he was clenching on. She broke free, causing him to fall. Patrick reached out and grabbed him, but this caused him to slide into Malin, who slid into Layla, and then slid into Nikki. All the while, everyone tried to desperately grab onto their ladder. Okay, this is a bad idea, Nikki admitted. Dark, can you be some more for? Not so much, Dark yelled back, both his hands currently holding on for dear life. This is a loud crack could be here on the side of the ladder. Oh, sugar, honey, I see! Malin screamed as the ladder suddenly came apart, the five tumbling down through the nexus. As they fell, though, the east grabbed hold of their crystal blast morphers and guiding crystals, inserting the ladder into the former. It's morphin' time! The team shied, firing the blasters and coating themselves with energy, morphing into the Gaia Rangers. What's more? Dirk pressed his thumb to his buckle, summoning the root crystal and swamping out the behemoth crystal for his blaster. It fired a charged up shot straight down, past the others where they hoped there was a bottom of some sort. Finally, after a few moments, a series of large finds sprung over the group, catching them as they fell. Oh man, that was pretty bad. Nikki groaned, leaning back against the vines as they slowly pulled him downward. Maybe next time, we do this in the first place. For what's mad? You get silly your argument from me, Patrick replied. Uh, guys? Layla said, looking straight down. As the others fall suit, they quickly caught sight of the large stone well that the vines were growing downward, and now were being pulled down toward. Think that's the well regret, Dark gas. I think that's a safe bet, Malin answered. 
Unless it's a really a time portal to, to the Sengoku period. Oh, no, no, bad in your talk, also reference, bad, 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 bad. At this point, everyone does class with the Violet Razor and Confusion. So, I really am the only one of the five of us that's watching you, Asha? No, I don't watch it. I just can't believe you made that reference, Patrick replied. Just remember, guys, Nikki says, the vines pulled him into the dark. No matter what happens, we can handle it, as long as we stay together, right? Nikki point, looking around, trying to peer through the black of the darkness. Guys? Within a few moments, the darkness faded, and feeling a completely different scene. A large terrain of gray stone in the middle of a dense gray fog, on the ground littered with hundreds, if not thousands, of dull, lifeless gray crystals. Even the sky above was completely gray, leaving the scenery to blend together in the most terrible of ways. And standing in the middle of it, completely alone, was the Red Ranger. Hello? Nikki yelled in a dull, gray void. Patrick? Layla? Dirk? Madeline? After a few moments, a figure emerged from the fog. A elf with spiky red hair, red eyes, and wearing bright leather armor. Chrono? However, the thing that caught Nikki's eye most was that Stretcho's leg was none other than a crystal blast morpher. In fact, despite each of the blasters looking exactly the same, Nikki could tell it wasn't just a crystal blast morpher. It was hers. An exact duplicate. Who are you? Nikki asked. Who do you think I am? The elf asked back, to which Nikki could only come up with one answer. Are you my ancestor? Nikki inquired. Do you visit the Guardian of Fire? The elf nodded his head. I am. I've been watching for some time now, seeing you lead your team. And I have to say, while you've done your best to adapt to the situation, you clearly demonstrate that you aren't cut out for this. Nikki's eyes widened under her helmet. What? Don't misunderstand, the Guardian of Fire said quickly. I don't want to have to say these things to you, and I know how hard you've been trying, and how hard much you care for this world. So it's that you're never meant to be a leader in this terrible war. It never should have been your burden to carry. But as my bloodline spread to Earth, and the Fiend's Crystal was passed down with it, Fitzley wound up in your hands at the worst possible time. Nikki sighed. Looking down at the crystal lying scattered and lifeless on the stone ground her ancestor went on. Well, it's all right now. You don't have to keep fighting if you don't want to. I've returned to take your place, if you want me to. Red Ranger looked at her gaze back to the Guardian of Fire, who held out his hand. My friends and I have been willing to pick up where we left off. We could send you and the others back to Earth. We could even give your friend Patrick his sight back. You don't need to live this life anymore. All you need to do is make a choice. Stay on Gaia, or return to Earth? Nikki's eyes wide, almost overjoyed this prospect. A way home, a way to restore Patrick's vision, the old guardians to take their place. All she had to do was say yes, and they could be home right away. Tears started to form her eyes at the thought. Home. Free of the pain of this war. Isn't that what they wanted since they first arrived on Gaia? All she had to do was leave it behind. Leave Gaia behind. It should have been the easiest choice to make. And yet, as Nikki thought about it, she realized she couldn't bring herself to say the words. I was left demanding why in her head. Patrick groaned as he got back to his feet, standing near the edge of a cliff. Shaky the cobwebs loose in his head. He heard the sound of water splashing below. He instinctively opened his eyes to see a fast open, with the sun sitting over it. Upon doing so, he quickly took in the beauty of the scenery, before it suddenly hit him what was happening. I... I can see! Patrick said, pulling off his helmet and sunglasses. I can see. I can see the sunset and it's gorgeous! Patrick fell back to his knees again. Tears flying from his eyes. Until the breeze caressed his face. He found himself weeping with joy. He could see again. Really see. Not just rely on images formed in his head with the air around him. Of course, he never said it to the others. Because the most important thing they should be focusing on was the war. The truth that was... He missed being able to see so badly. Beautiful, isn't it? Patrick's eyes widened, turning to face the person standing behind him. To his utter shock, it was Darkia, only somehow not. 
She looked like Darkia, but her skin was a fair Caucasian tone. Her hair was much longer. Instead of armor, she was wearing a long red and black dress that flowed with the wind. Darkia, Petra gasped. How did you... It's nice having the gift of sight, Darkia said, her voice having a much softer, sweeter tone to it. In the sunset, it's so beautiful. I've been in the dark so long, I forgot what it looked like. Patrick died, blessing a little. Yeah, but at the same time, I can't help but feel like you're even more. Darkia giggled, cutting the Green Ranger off. Is this how you've always wanted to see me? Human? Beautiful? Why is that I wonder? Patrick scratched the back of his head, embarrassed as Darkia knelt down before him. It's a wonderful feeling. Seeing exactly what you want, right in front of you, right within touching distance, or maybe kissing distance. No, 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 no nothing like that. Patrick said, backing away. I mean, although I don't think I'm beautiful like this. It's just that that's not the way. I just think it's simple how just because your dad's an evil took, you had to grow up to be just like him. You want to give it a chance to be anything else. Thank you, giggled, standing back up. <laughs> It's really noble of you, Patrick. You really are like a knight. Patrick grabbed his arm, it visiting nervously, while Darkia proceeded to frown sadly. The thing is, more often than not, it suddenly seems too good to be true. It usually is. Before Patrick could inquire further, a dark wind suddenly blew in his face. Everything around him turned into a black void. He groaned as he fell to his hands and knees, unable to see. Unable to form a coherent phrase in his mind through the dark wind rushing around him. He stopped, desperately trying to grab hold of anything in the dark. Doctor! Patrick yelled. Go back! Don't go back into the darkness! I'm not the one lost in darkness, silly. Sorry, his voice echoed. You are. Okay, that was weird as all heck, Dirk noted, getting up from the grassy hill in the middle of nowhere he was standing upon. Great! No sign of the others. Terrific. Guess that me means we can find let's go find each other before we find the gauntlets. <laughs> the only thing you're gonna find down here is trouble. A familiar voice rang out, causing Dark's boil the blood to boil the serious senior mouth the sound of it. Earth Razor spun around, the face to face with a dark gray, lanky looking monster, that sparked evilly out. Doppelganger! Dirk growled, bringing his quake gags out right away. Surprised to see me? Lightless asked. I shouldn't be, Dirk yelled. Your destruction was just another illusion, wasn't it? Can't get anything past you, huh, Dirk? Doppelganger hissed. Suffice to say, though, it took you far too late to figure it out. Right now, your friends are about to suffer their worst nightmares, all because you couldn't stop me when it counted most. I knew we should have never trusted Walker, Dirk accused. This whole trip was just one big trap for my friends. Oh, believe me, Doppelganger said with a grin. The biggest nightmare of all is waiting just for you, and I get to be the one who carries it out. Bring it on, you creep, Dirk roared, swinging his axe hard at the opponent, waiting for the lightless to transform its arm into a chainsaw. Walking the axe as it mocked mockingly at the orange ranger. Such a temper, Doppelganger taunted. I've forgotten how angry you could get when you weren't cracking jokes or talking about the farm. Let me remind you, Dirk shied, letting go of his axe with his right hand and grabbing his blaster, still in his holster, firing at the lightless. However, the doppelganger was quick to his plan, liquefying and surrounding around the blast before turning his arm into a sledgehammer, hitting Dirk hard in the chest and knocking him off his feet. It's not really the best you could do, is it? The doppelganger asked, reforming his, that in a tiniest. Hop a thing, little brother. Dirk sighs, why in anger as he got back to his feet, rusting the double king with his axe. I told you never to use my family again! Madeline? Leia cut out, running through the thick force around her. Nikki! Patrick! Dirk! Lena! The Blue Ranger heard Madeline call, peering through the woods to see a violet figure approach her. Sis! Leia shouted, running out to meet with the violet ranger, who quickly grabbed her up in a hug. Oh man, am I glad to see you? Me too, Mallard replied. Any sign of the others? Mallard shook her head. No, nothing. 
a worry something terrible happened when whatever it was separated us. Malin nodded. Don't worry, we'll find them. We just leave everything to Big Sess, and we'll come out just fine. Layla rolled her eyes under her helmet. Uh, whatever, let's just... The Blue Ranger stopped. Came around Malin and stared at her inquisitively. What is it? Do you, you smell that? Layla asked. Malin blinked, taking a sniff. Sure enough, she did smell something. Smoke. Once she caught a whiff of the scent, she could hear the sound of something burning from far off. More so, she heard the sound of flames raising, floorboards breaking, ceilings giving in, and of people screaming for help on the other side of the flames from her. All the while, she was helpless to do anything about it. Melon? Leia said, waving a hand from her sister's face. Sis? Yo! Now it shook her head hard, pointing herself from the image forming her head. Huh? What? You okay? Layla asked. Yeah. Just kind of phased out for a sec. Malin answered. More like your brain left Gaia for another world or something. Layla replied. Also, the smell's getting stronger. Malin nodded. Those are the same. Looking around, she eventually found a source walking in from behind a tree a few yards away. It looked like a blot, but it wasn't. It, was ma it wasn't made of darkness either. It looked like to be a flames. Everything it touched was either burned to cinders or set on fire, spawning new ones that walked mentally towards the two. Some kind of fire blots? Leia asked, throwing her blaster. Wherever they are, they can totally go away! Madeline replied, twisting her Thunderbird crystal with the turtle crystal. Before I start shooting! Before the two could open fire, the apparent fire blots began splitting up, creating several more of themselves. In seconds, there were a couple of dozen of them. Another second later, four dozen. The near half a hundred fire blots all growled as they sauntered over to the two. The trees gained scent of fire as they approached. Uh, I think we're going to need a fire hose, Malin yelled, grabbing Leo's hand running away. What are you doing? Leo cried, getting dragged away. We need to stop those things from spreading. We need more water, Malin insisted. We need to find a lake or a river or... Malin suffered in tracks. Ice wide as another fifty or so fire blots stood before them. Cutting him off, the others approached from the well being. Layla quickly started shooting them down. Her best charge up shot only took out four. Those were replaced almost immediately. There's way too many Layla said, Sis, what do we do? Sis? Malin didn't hear her sister. Instead, she could hear suit as the sound of fire burning crackled in her ears. You nuts. Fire! So many things you could have done, Darkia's voice said. Spencer crawled on his hands and feet through the dark. So many opportunities you could have had. You could have been a meteorologist like your father, or a geologist like your grandfather, or maybe even a zoologist like your great aunt. But no, you had to be a knight, a power ranger, a guardian. And what did that earn you? I just wanted to help people, Patrick groaned. The dark wind howling in his ears as he dragged himself further along until he could feel an armored boot hold his head down. And a lot of good it did! Darkia yelled from above the Green Ranger. Look at you, lost and blind in the dark down there, while my brother and I, your enemies, are fighting to stop Dargoon up there. You tried to help people, but in the end, you can't even help yourself. Petro created his teeth and set his eyes as Salamancer went on. So here's a question. After all that, after losing opportunities you had available to you, and after failing to protect anyone, was it really worth it? Would you do all that again? Patrick's eyes shot open, letting loose a low growl on the back of his throat. What kind of stupid question is that? Closing his fist, Patrick started down their ground, sensing essentially a small tornado straight up that knocked Darkia off of him and threw him back to his feet. Yes, I do it all again! I keep doing that until both worlds are safe, and you and your brother, Dragoon, Tritarius, and whoever else gets to know whatever they do want at me! Get my arms off for all I care, and hold my sword between my teeth and slap it all down! Hearing Darkia hit the ground next to him and charge him, Patrick sets down his senses through the air around him. However, once he did, he found that Darkia wasn't really there. In fact, none of his surroundings were right. It was on a cliff. Or was how many glasses were moved. It was at the bottom of a stone well. More to the point, he wasn't alone either, as the other rangers were standing around. 
We need to be surrounded in some sort of dark aura. Seeing all this, Pat realized he hit Patrick on the side of the head like an 18-wheeler. All fears, all doubts, regrets, mistakes! Patrick gasped before grabbing hold of Nikki. See your heart, Nikki? It's not all of it. It's not real! Nikki, you're not singing as real! Guardian Fire retracted his hand in confusion. Well, come on, Nikki. You can decide this. You don't really want to stay, do you? Stay and fight this war. You don't want to go home. Nikki looked away. Of course I want to go home. It's just, I don't know if I can leave Guy like this. With all this terrible stuff going on. You were fine to leave it before, remember? Nikki said an answer to reason. He wanted to go home and call the other rangers for help. Let them deal with it. I remember, Nikki replied, looking the old guy in the eye. You know something? This is my, our responsibility now. I realized that when we fought the fake Power Rangers, that regardless of how or why we were sent here, it happened, and that it was our mission. But this isn't meant for you, Nikki, the Guardian Fire insisted. Look at the things that have happened, the mistakes that were made. I'm well aware of my mistakes, Aunt Sister, Nikki yelled. I didn't know where I screwed up. You don't need to list them. I led Patrick into a fight to cost him his eyesight. I almost cost my team their souls. I failed to remove the curse of Dragoon. And you're telling me you never once screwed up as a leader? Karin flinched a little like he'd been hit. Nikki. Michelle, I... Look, I know you mean well, and I'm sorry to lash out, but this is my decision, Nikki said. I made a commitment to protect this world. It's my mission, mine and my friends. You made the same once with your friends. Now it's our turn. Sorry that makes you disappointed in me, but it has to be done. I hope you understand. For a while, the Guardian of Fire stood completely still, like a statue. Finally, he smiled, turned around, and walked away, waving back at Nikki as he went. With that, the dense fog around Nikki began to light up, causing the mist to dissipate into nothingness. When the light faded, Nikki found herself instead at the bottom of the dark well, being taken hard by Patrick. Hey, knock it off! Nikki yelled, pushing Patrick back a bit. Look, you called us out! Patrick exclaimed. Where are we? The Red Ranger asked, looking around. At the bottom of the well of regrets, we were trying to get to all along, Pat answered. As soon as we got here, we all put, put into some kind of trance. I saw my ancestor, the original guardian of fire, Nikki muttered. It felt so real. So did mine, the Green Ranger said with a nod. My guess is the same for them. Nikki looked at Dark, Madeline, and Layla, all surrounded by Dark Auras. Did we get him out of this? I don't think we do, Patrick replied. All the sinking of rubble spots of the water I could give them did nothing. Nikki's eyes widened as he realized the truth. Patrick didn't get her out of her trance, so he had to get herself out. That meant it fell on the others to get themselves out, too. There's no way to be sure how long they would be down there, having these visions. Bottom line, if the others didn't get themselves out of their trances, they weren't leaving. If they couldn't leave, Gaia was as good as destroyed. Yeah, I'm leaving you off on like that. <laughs>